Welcome to Ferro's Technology. Today I'd like to talk about some advanced options for controls that you can put on a form and help gather information uh, from your, your users. So let, let's get started. I'm going to pull up my database here and I'm going to open up a form that I made just for this demo called option group and what you'll see on it is a checkbox an option button a date field and an option group i'd like to show you quickly how to set these up and make sure that they work the first time that you go about it i can find these controls under the controls button so what i want to look at first today is the checkbox if we look at the checkbox and put it on here. It presents itself this way when you first put it on the screen. I always like to check after the label, so you'll have to move it over if that's the way you like it. Here's the label. You name the label like I did follow up, and here's your, your checkbox. You can then attach the checkbox to a field, and I've attached it to a field called follow up. Now the same thing happens with the option button. And the option button looks like this and you click on it and it does the same exact thing. You have to move it to the back if you like it better that way. You caption the label and you have your option button here then that you can attach to a field like I've attached text message. Now my label of course here, if I look at the label here is text message caption. Just like follow up here is captioned follow up. So that's how to ba do the basic setup. Now, there's a really important item that is available to you for both the checkbox and the option button, and that is over here, check triple state. Now, what triple state is, you would expect in a checkbox or an option button, two options. It's basically Boolean, less yes, no. And you would assume that a yes, no field underneath that would work just fine. If you don't want triple option, they do work just fine. But if you want the triple option, you have to use a, an integer field. So if I look in the table that's underneath this, they're listed as number fields here. You see that I've set the default to null because that third option is the null value. So the null value allows you to know whether or not the user has actually given you input for that checkbox or that option button by checking for the null instead of the negative one for yes and the zero for no. Uh, you set it to in any type of integer, long or short, and it'll collect that negative one and zero, and it'll leave it at null if the default value is null. In fact, the user can set it back to null if they want to. So I'm going to close this really quick. We'll take a look at this. And if I have this record here, uh, right now it's set to null. And that's the way the checkbox looks when it's set to null. Now this is the way the option button looks when it's set to null. Now when I uncheck it here, it set, sets it to yes. And then take it out, it sets it to no. This one sets it to yes and then to no. So if I click it again, you notice that it goes through the options again. Okay, and here it goes through the options again. Okay, yes and no, but it is no when you first get into it. Okay, now let's go to design view here. The follow up date here, now that's an interesting one. You can help your users to select a date by doing what they call a date picker that can be attached to a date, um, a date field. Now, the way to do that is, let's look at our property sheet, is to come down here to a show date picker property under all. Now, it's always set to never. So the date picker never shows up unless you actually choose it. You can then choose it and say, yes, I want the date picker for dates. And you can turn it on. What it looks like when it's turned on is like this. When you click on it here, there's the date picker icon. When you click on it, you can choose a date from a calendar down here. So if they're choosing a date, like what date they want the delivery to be, or what date they want you to ship, or what date to follow up on an on a item that you're keeping track of, it's easy to do. It's a little cumbersome if you're choosing a date several years in the future 
or several years in the past, it gets to be a little cumbersome. But it can be quite useful when you have those near-term dates. So let's go back to Design View. Now then, that leaves us with this option group. Now the option group really is, it is quite unique in the respect that you really want the wizard to help you set it up. And to, in order to have the wizard help you set it up, you want this use control wizards to be selected. Now, when I float my mouse off of it, you see that it is selected. Now, it has the gray box around it, not like ActiveX controls or the other that are just white behind it. So with the gray behind it, it means it's selected. If I wanna put an option group here, my icon is up here. It's the XYZ option group. If I click that and click here, it the wizard then walks me through setting it up. Now I can set this one up the same way and call this first one facts. And I tab to the next one and phone and email. And if I click next here, the default choice is facts. Let's say no. Let's not have the default choice to be facts. Let's have the default default uh, to be email, for example. Fax is a little old fashioned. And then click next. Now it'll it'll it will assign values to the different items here. And that's important for when you're querying the data and want to present it back to the user. You'll want to be able to identify that one is fax and two is phone and three is email. Other than that, you've got good data coming back into your database and the field type behind it would be an integer in order to collect those numbers. When I click on next, it'll let me store the value in a particular field or save for later use means you could have it be unbound at that time. So I'm going to set this to contact type and I'm going to click next and I can choose the different type of presentation that I want, whether it be a checkbox type presentation, look like this, or whether it be toggle buttons, which would be basically like that. Uh, I'm going to leave it checkbox here. Uh, I can choose different presentations for the checkbox even. And when I click on next, I can give it a name. And then when I click on finish, it looks like this. Now, if I actually show the data here, notice the default is email. And I, when I, now notice over here, it doesn't present itself, but when I click that here, now these are gonna act in concert because they're going to the same field. So I'm gonna, as I click, you'll see them both change. So that's the way to set up an option group. And I, if you find that this has been valuable to you, and I hope it has, hit that like button down there and let's get it out to other people. And I hope to see you later again in my channel. Thanks.